Hi, um, I'm here with Thibaut Chappelle, who has just finished uh, appearing as a, an expert speaker at our hearing on blockchain technology and competition policy here at the OECD. Um, thanks for agreeing to say a few words with us, uh, Thibaut. Thanks for having me. Um, if I jump straight into a, a question and say, um, what do you see as being the key uh, exclusionary concerns that might be uh, posed by blockchain technology? Um, so I think it is really important to distinguish between public and private blockchains. Uh, as far as public blockchain is concerned, I would say that the likelihood of anti-competitive practices mm. being committed uh, as of today is uh, quite low. And it is for uh, three reasons. The first is that they don't have a proper governance in, in the sense of the, the governance as we are used to, which is uh, basically having a pilot on the plane. So because of that, it is really, really hard within public blockchain to actually choose a strategy, mm -hmm. unilateral strategies, and then implement that strategy. Uh, the second reason why is because um, it is really hard uh, to modify the way they, they function. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, they will have to find a way to implement uh, the possibility of later committing anti-competitive practices from start, from the day one of the blockchain creation, sure. which is very unlikely. And uh, the, the third reason why is uh, because of uh, what I call the visible effects, which is basically the idea that everything you do on a private blockchain, mm -hmm. on a public blockchain, sorry, is uh, public and seen by all. So you have less incentive to do uh, anti-competitive practices because uh, if you do so, then all of the users on the blockchain will see that. Sure. Um, but I would say that that, that might change because they, uh, most of them are working of new governance uh, uh, system. Yeah. And so, uh, yes, uh, they, they might uh, bring a pilot on the public uh, blockchain. Uh, plane. Um, as far as um, private blockchain is concerned, it is way different. It is way different for two reasons. The first is because obviously they do have a governance, uh, so they do have a way to conduct uh, unilateral practices, yeah. and they can also modify the way they function really easily mm -hmm. with no approval uh, from uh, any of the users. Sure. So anytime they might decide that they will do uh, anti-competitive practices. Uh, the second reason, uh, it's because there is no visible effect unless, of course, they are designed that way. But for most private blockchains, mm. uh, what you can do uh, on it, it's not uh, seen by all. You can choose. Those users will see the transaction. Those users will not. So yeah, obviously, yeah. you have that incentive to do uh, something anti-competitive. Okay, okay. And what do you think agencies should be thinking about doing at this stage to sort of get ahead on some of these, these points? Um, so, if anything. <laughs> um, I think uh, three, three uh, things. Uh, the first is to understand the blockchain, mm. uh, which implies, in my opinion, to read the, the, the most paper possible, but also to talk to uh, programmers mm -hmm. and uh, developers. And uh, I think we have a big uh, chunk to learn from law and economics, but mm. also maybe it is time uh, for law and programming. Um, um, the time has come, and, and if lawyers and uh, developers uh, don't actually find a way to dialogue, mm. it might create some legal issues and technical issues. Uh, the um, second thing um, um, is that they should find a way to uh, get antitrust or competition law uh, get into the blockchain. Mm. Uh, otherwise, it might be very difficult to do so for mm. technical reasons. So they should uh, engage in a dialogue uh, between competition uh, agencies and regulators to see what uh, can be done. And uh, the third point, uh, and it's a bit more uh, of a long-term work, uh, is uh, maybe to, to think about the need to redesign competition agencies. I see that as a, a blockchain antitrust paradox, which is basically the idea that you do have competition law, which is built around the idea of being anti-trustees. Sure. Uh, on the other side, you have those blockchain uh, systems which are, in fact, antitrusties. So it, it does create a paradox, um, and um, I, I wonder about the legitimacy of um, uh, competition authorities' decision, which are uh, imposing fine on blockchain which are decentralized, sure. whether competition agencies are really centralized. So maybe they should think about uh, integrating blockchain within their functioning. It could be done by um, integrating principle of future she 
could watch it, uh, voting, uh, liquid democracy, and so on. Okay. Um, and also, obviously, uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, it is really exciting time uh, okay, for them and for us. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.